Do that good. Good Good morning. Welcome to Ripley Presbyterian Church. It's so good to see you all joining us in our sanctuary this morning. And we're happy to have each of you joining us in your sacred space, wherever you're worshiping today. Friends, this is the day the Lord has made for us to give glory to God, to be molded more in the image of Jesus, and find renewed the joy of our salvation. Pray you have a wonderful worship experience. Before we begin our worship time, we do want to share in announcements and prayer concerns. Uh, I'm going to cut those a little shorter today because we are celebrating Holy Communion. Are there announcements you'd like to make today? Verbally, do we have any that we need? Choir practice at 1130. If you are a singer, uh, if you sing in the shower, we will welcome you to sing in our sanctuary. So come on and practice with us immediately following worship to begin preparation for our choir to renew our worship uh, time as leading us in song. So come if you can. Any other announcements? We will be starting a young adult Sunday school class soon, the gathering class. Uh, we're going to try starting around 9.30. That way we have some time right before the young folks. Maybe 9.45 before we get started, actually, or a little later. Just be a brief devotion every week. So keep listening and searching for information on that. Any other announcements we need to touch on verbally here? We do have our tailgate coming up. I just can't help it. Wednesday, September 14th. This is our effort to renew our Wednesday night activities for the fall. We're going to have a meeting at least once a month focusing on faith, fun, and food. Not necessarily in that order. Hopefully faith will stay first. But we're going to have a fellowship time at 545, Wednesday, September 14th. Come and be a part of that and share with your church family. Let's all make an intentional effort to do that. Team favorites, right, Jim? Team colors that week. Okay, very good. All right, transitioning to our prayer list. Are there updates to our prayer list today? Any additions you'd like to share? Boy, those greeters are having a ball out there, aren't they? (laughs) That's great. That's how you should feel in church. Friends, once again, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us worship God now in joy and in gladness. Thank you for that, Lynn. Also, we will be celebrating Holy Communion as I shared there earlier. If you have not procured your elements, uh, one of the ushers, one of our greeters are going to open the door in just a moment and give a look. Just give them a wave if you've not picked up your individual elements here to share in Holy Communion today. You all are invited to share in the Lord's table. This is God's table, not our table. So we all who are eager to be nourished with his grace are welcome to receive. All right. Let's share now in a portion of Psalm 112 
for our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. This generation of the upright will be blessed. Friends, let's respond to that call, that invitation to worship our God by standing together and sharing in a hymn of praise, number 244. Worship is understanding and celebrating that we need a Savior. To do that, we confess our sins. Will you join with me now and let us say in unison this prayer of confession. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins, and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, cleanse us from all our offenses, and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Hear these words of life. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sin, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens above, so great is his loving kindness toward those who hear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Friends, church, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Let's stand together and celebrate our forgiveness and proclaim God's glory in song.
Be seated as our young disciples come up this morning. Hey, Brooks. How are y'all? We're going to take you on a little journey here. Get a close-up of Hannah and Jenna. Good to see you. Come on, she said, now is this guy gonna get in my way? I'm gonna walk behind you, Tatum. I won't even, don't even act like you see me. We're good. Here you go, Randall B. Man, that is perfect. Look at that hand out just a little bit. Got Miss Jenna in there too. We are cooking with Crisco. Good morning. How are y'all? Is everybody good today? Hannah, you look like a little princess this morning. Oh, that dress, you like my dress? I got a black dress on here. <laughs> What's up? Well, oh, he's a fist bumper. Y'all, we're on TV. Can y'all see that? I saw Tatum and Brooks earlier this morning. I saw everybody. I saw Bailey this morning. We all were in class. Okay. I have told y'all before about my dog, Luna, right? And my dog, Dash. My dog, Luna, is she's black. She's pretty. She's a sweetheart. Dash is grumpy and mean. He's a dachshund. He's an overweight dachshund, kind of like me, an overweight creature, and he's an overweight dachshund. I didn't want you to know. Okay, so the other day, I haven't told y'all about Dash's cousin, Izzy, and Luna's cousin, Izzy. Now, they're not really related, but here's the thing. Izzy is my great niece, Montana, and, and her family's dog, and Izzy and Luna, they're buddies, they like to play together, but the other day they came to visit. Izzy spent the night, Luna was there, of course, and we put out food. We put out everybody's food, okay? So we put out a food bowl for Luna with her food in it, and we put a food bowl for Izzy with her food in it. And then they went to eat, but guess what they did? Y'all, can y'all guess what they did? Whose food do you think? She ate the dog food, but she ate Izzy's food. And you know what Izzy did? Izzy ate Luna's food. They ate the wrong food. And they ate it like it was a T-bone steak, like it was the best thing they ever had. They wanted something different, didn't they? Or maybe instead of wanting something different, they might have wanted what the other one had. Y'all ever feel that way? You ever want what somebody else has got? We, well, we're going to talk in a little bit. Brooks, is Brooks that way sometimes, Mama? Jody's that way sometimes. Can I do a little confession here at Children's Church? We all are that way a little bit at times, aren't we? I'm going to read a scripture a little bit, and we're going to hear a word called humble. Anybody know what that word means? You ever heard of that? That's a funny word, isn't it? Yeah, that's not a word we hear very often. Uh-uh, we don't hear that one off. When I'm thinking, I was trying to think of how do you describe that word? How do you tell your disciples? How do you tell old disciples uh, what the word humble means? And you know, I think it goes back to kind of what those puppies' lessons were to us. When we're humble, we don't worry so much about wanting what everybody else has got or that we have to be first or we have to have the best or everything has to be about us. We want it to be about God's love for everybody. And we're not wanting it just, sometimes we call that selfish, right? Wanting it our way all the time. I know Elizabeth talked last, a few weeks ago, about not wanting to share. Some, that's hard for us sometimes, right? So if we're humble, we want to share. We feel like, I want you to have the same thing I've got. I want you to know the happiness that I can give you a little gift to make you feel better. Last night, our neighbors brought us some food. They shared with us they made me happy and made my belly full. So when we're humble, it doesn't all have to be for us. And we realize it's not all about us. It's about loving everybody so God can be glorified most of all. Okay? Thank y'all so much for being such an important part of this church. Y'all are so good to give us life and energy and celebrate God's love. Because you know what the Bible says about children? This. The Bible says. You are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Thank y'all for being with our church. Let's pray.
God, we thank you that these young disciples pour life into our church. We're grateful for the opportunity to minister to them. And may we learn from them and not only just teach them. For your word does tell us these children are the greatest. May we embrace them with the same love and grace and mercy. And nurture them in the faith as you nurture us, nurture us all as your children. I pray your holy hedge of protection over each one this morning, all the days of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen Brooks. Thank you, Danny. Good to see you all. We got the best children in the whole world. I love it. Thank you all. All right, Tatum, I'm going to go ahead of you. See you all. Thank you, Randall. Oh, y'all waiting? Oh, wait. See? I forgot the candy. I forgot the candy. My goodness, they let me know. Hey, I knew there was something that didn't seem right, but I just couldn't figure it out. So are y'all trying to say y'all don't really come up here to talk to me? You just want the goods? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. We'll bribe you. We're not proud. Uh, is everybody, did y'all already have your bulletins this morning? They've already got them. Have them there, Beth. Great. All right, dig in there. Get Tatum something, Mama. Boy, I just almost messed up in here, didn't I? Thank you, virtual worshipers, for being patient with our technical changes here. I hear, I think Miss Jennifer Huddleston did a wonderful job bringing her message last week. Did any of y'all enjoy that and were inspired? Thank you. This morning's first reading comes from the book of Hebrews. Uh, if you'd like to follow along, you can find this in your pew Bible on page 227. Hebrews chapter 13. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those that are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of the way, their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And then down to verse 15. Through him then... Let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's pray now for God's illumination upon that reading. The reading we're about to hear and the sermon that we will search for God's illumination on to. Let's pray. Oh God, you are the light of the world. We ask that you do open our eyes and help us to see. Your word tells us that you are the word made flesh. So will you open our ears now and help us to hear. Your grace, oh God, is the wellspring of life. Will you open our hearts? Help us to feel the living waters of your grace. Come, O Holy Spirit, that the words of this mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be pleasing and acceptable unto you. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. In Christ we pray. Amen. So I'm going to throw a bit of a curveball this morning. I'm going to share two scripture readings instead of one. Uh, the first one is the one published from Luke chapter 14. I'll begin with verse 1 and then continue at verse 7. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees 
to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the place, to, chose the place of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take away, or excuse me, start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He also said to them, The one who had invited you, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends and your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be, be repaid at the resurrection of the righteousness. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Okay, our second lesson of scripture that I want to share with you today is from Nehemiah chapter 1. That's in the Old Testament. Uh, we're going to read, begin reading in, on page 430 in your pew Bible, if you'd like to follow along. Now, that's in the Old Testament, so go back to the front of your Bible and come back to page 430. And listen with me again for the word of the Lord. The Lord of, excuse me, the words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah, in the month of Kislev, in the twelfth year, while I was in Susa, the capital, one of my brothers, Hanani came with certain men from Judah and asked and asked them and I asked them how the Jews had survived those who had escaped the captivity in Jerusalem he replied the survivors there in the providence who escaped cap captivity are in great trouble and shame the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been destroyed by fire when i heard these words i sat down and wept and mourned for days fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keeps his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayers of your servant now. For I pray before you day and night for your servants people of Israel, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you, both in my family, both me and my family have sinned. We have offended you deeply, failing to keep the commandments, the statutes, and ordinances that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do not uh, do and, and commandments and do them, though your outcasts are under the farthest skies, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place at which I have chosen to establish my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeem by your great power, your strong hand, O Lord. Let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. At that time, I was cupbearer to the king. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. So as I was preparing our message this week and reflecting on this parable, this message from the Gospel of Luke that also inspired the title for our sermon today, I was really grasped by these words, humble yourself. That's what the writer Luke uses in this parable to proclaim to us. Now, those of us who embody the faith of 
Jesus as our Lord and Savior? No, those beautiful passages from Philippians chapter 2, right, that describe to us that Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but yet he humbled himself, taking the form of a servant. To give his life as a ransom for us all. We appreciate those words and embrace those words. But here the writer of Luke pushes us as followers of Jesus. As disciples of him. To also be about humility. And not only understand that being humble is central to our God's life. As Jesus was on earth. But hear this call together where he says to us, humble yourselves. So if Luke is making that proclamation to us, I thought it was important for us today to wrestle with and embrace this call of faith and try to figure out what are some ways that together as people of faith and individual sojourners with others, how can we? Humble ourselves. How do we take responsibility for this call to strive to be more in the image of Jesus as we serve this world like him and for God's glory? So we turn to Nehemiah today and this great ambassador of our faith who provided exceptional leadership for the people of Israel by rebuilding the walls that had been torn down after the people of Israel were exiled into Babylon. The remnant that was there came to Nehemiah who had risen to almost the highest, well actually the highest height he could have risen to in the foreign land. Some would say maybe he was even the number two as being the cupbearer to the king. They came to Nehemiah searching for help. And Nehemiah provides for us what I want to describe today as a plan for us to humble ourselves. So that's the acronym that I think that we want to take away from this sermon today is how can we embody a plan, P-L-A-N, that Nehemiah gives to us of how we can work toward humbling ourselves. So with that acronym of the word plan, let's begin with the P of the word plan that Nehemiah gives us an example of how to humble ourselves. We all know it. What did Nehemiah do first? The P? He prayed. He prayed when he was confronted with the challenge. Instead of running out ahead and taking action immediately, the first thing Nehemiah did was said, I don't know the answer. There's a problem, Lynn, and I don't have the solution, but God does. So let me pray. Have any of y'all ever got ahead of God or are taking action too soon, maybe in business or on your athletics team or in your leadership and government, right? You know, there's an old saying that if you're shooting target practice, you need to get ready, you aim, and then you fire, right? Boy, I don't know about y'all, sometimes I fire and then I forgot to aim and I didn't get ready or anything, Lamont. I just take action. Nehemiah first prayed to get ready. He prayed prayers of confession, as we do here in our worship. He prayed prayers of, of adoration to God, as we do here in our worship. You see, these elements that we include in our worship, this traditional service every day, they're not by accident. We structure this in every way we can, following our forebears in the faith, the guidance of Holy Scripture. We have hymns of praise, prayers of confession, of illumination, and we strive in all we do to give glory to God. Nehemiah showed us how to be people who humble ourselves by praying, by telling God his need. That was the first thing he says. He says, O oh Lord, here in verse 6, let your ear... Be attentive and your eyes open so that you may hear and see the prayers of your servant that I'm praying today. But you know what else Nehemiah did as we move from the P into the L of this plan to humble ourselves? Nehemiah also listened to others in the faith. 
He listened to those he respected, right? Now that makes sense, even in a practical realm, right? In our daily lives. Manya and I were having some work done at our house recently. And one of the first things she did was she asked the expert. She asked the expert, said, what's your opinion? We want to listen to those who know more than us about the subject matter, correct? Nehemiah listened to the needs of the people, and he listened for the king's guidance how to address the problem. That's what we do when we humble ourselves. We understand we don't have all the answers. We understand that we can't go it alone in this world. There are no lone rangers in humility, right? Even Lone Ranger had Tonto. Come on, we need others. So listen to those we respect in the faith. Those fair forebears before us. Those who nurtured us as young people growing up in the faith and still nurture us today. But you know what all what else Nehemiah did? Not only in his prayer did he speak to God. Not only in listening did he listen to others, but in his prayer, Nehemiah also listened to God. You know, more than speaking to God in prayer, perhaps most of all, it's time for us to submit ourselves to listen more fervently for God's still small voice. How about that? You know, I remember when we lived in St. Louis, we had a Man, you, you speak different languages. You can't always understand each other, right? They didn't understand Mississippi real good. And I didn't understand St. Louis real good, so sometimes we'd have a hard time communicating. I mean, for example, I would call in food at a restaurant, and they'd say, what's the name? And I'd say, Hill. And they'd say, you spell that H-E-I-L, Hill. I put those two syllables in there, Benton. And I said, no, Hill, like you're driving down the road, you're running over hills. So I got tired of having to explain how to pronounce Hill, so uh, I just started saying Jody. Now, you know, that was easier, and they could get that simpler. And there was this one place that we call quite often. There's a lot of Italians, I don't know if y'all realize this, that live in the St. Louis area, so a lot of Italian names. And I'd called in, and sure enough, made my order, and I said, it's for Jody. And she said, yeah, I wrote it down right here, got it. And didn't ask me a question. I said, it's going good. They know me now. They understand me now. We're making progress. I went to pick up my order, pulled up, little lady Martha there took my order. She knew me, remembered me. She said, hey, Jody. I said, see, they know me now. I'm making my home here. She said, uh, I don't see your order. And I, she said, well, what would you have? And I said, well, we had this and that and a little bit of the other. And she said, yeah, I see the, the, the food that you said, but it's not your name. She said, I said, well, what is She said, it looks like it's Perchody. And... Uh, she said, I don't know what, how they got that. Sounds like an Italian name. I said, I don't know either. I said, I called in and I told them it's for Jody. And some reason they wrote down for Jody. I don't know how they got for Jody out of that. But over time, over time, they got to where they understood me better. And you know what? Over time, I got to where I understood them better. And I think this may have been happening too. I think I may have started talking more like them the longer I was around them, the more I listened to them. Friends, could it be the more we listen for God's voice, we just might start sounding like God with our love to the world around us. To humble yourself we need to pray. We need to listen to others around us, but most of all, we need to listen for God's voice to guide us in our lives. The A of the plan for humbling ourselves is we need the adoration to go to God. We need to be people of worship. That's what we do on Sunday morning. That's why after COVID-19, we're coming back into the sacred space and continuing to worship online because Worship is paramount to our faith, friends. Beyond Sunday school, beyond doing good stuff, the first and primary role for us as people of God is to bring glory to the one who made us and the one who saved us. 
See, when we worship, we count our blessings. We consider the good things God has done, and that inspires all the other acts of our faith to do good things for others, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. When we pause long enough to get out of ourselves and see what God has done, that is the beginning of worship in our right relationship with God. It's the foundation of our faith, our Presbyterian heritage, our Reformed tradition. Those solis of the faith, one of them is the glory to God alone. Christ alone for salvation. Scripture alone to guide us, but glory to God alone. Our forebears understood that. The forebears of the faith did too. We still practice that. When we humble ourselves, we say it's about God's glory and not our Finally, the end. The end of the plan to humble ourselves remind us that it's not all about us. Not all about us, right? Do you hear how Nehemiah exemplified that today in his worship, in his prayer? He used the word servant. I tried to count them as I was reading them. I think the word servant was recited six times in this one chapter from the beginning of Nehemiah. And the very last thing he said was this. I was cupbearer to the king. You see what the cupbearer did? They tasted the wine. They were the one most trusted to make sure someone hadn't poisoned the king. They were so trusted they were the last one to touch the vessel before it was given to the king. Wow, what trust. But he understood his role was to serve the king. But more than serving the king, Nehemiah understood it wasn't to serve himself. And more than simply serving the king on earth, Nehemiah's commitment most of all was to serve the king of kings, the most high God of heaven. He had humbled himself so that God would be glorified. May we walk in his ways, no joy of humility. Amen. All right, friends, I tried to preach fast today because I know we've got communion. My daddy said nobody's ever been saved after 12 o'clock, so we've got to go. We get through at 1130. Then we better get going before that. Y'all be done left me if we're here to 12, won't we? Friends, as a part of our tradition of faith, we affirm our faith every week. We remember the central tenets of the Christian faith, not the Presbyterian faith, not the Reformed faith, not just our congregation's faith, but this is central to what it means to be Christian. It was written in the early centuries of our faith. It speaks of the Holy Catholic Church. That means the universal church of Jesus Christ. That means every church that claims faith in Christ. So let us together, in the tradition of our forebears, remember what it is that we believe. Would you stand with me? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, let us now respond in faith by giving of ourselves and sharing together in God's tithes and our offerings. I invite you to procure your elements if you've not done so. If you're at home, to share in Holy Communion with us in just a few moments. If you have crackers or some type of beverage instead of juice, God will honor that as well. Let's share together in God's holy feast.
Almighty God, we do come into this holy setting to offer you our praise. To thank you for the gift of life and love and life more abundantly found in you. We ask your blessing, O oh God, upon these offerings. May they be used in ways to reflect your love and bring glory to your name here on earth. Help us to be your light where there's darkness, your love where there's hate, your hope where there's despair. We pray for our congregation. We ask for miracles of grace to guide us, to, to give us the, the increase in families and children and resources to serve this community through your love and for your glory. We pray not only for our church, but wherever your gospel and goodness is proclaimed in practice, will you inspire and empower your saints. We pray for our nation, our county, and our state and city governing bodies. Everyone who holds power over others, guide them in Micah's spirit to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly in your way. We pray for the weak, the sick, the hopeless, the hurting, the least, the last, the lost, and the lonely. Every person on our prayer list, will you bring healing and wholeness and miracles of grace? Finally, we pray for ourselves and the great power of this beautiful gift called prayer. Right now, everyone who's hearing these words is praying for us. And together, we're praying for one another. You know the needs of our lives even more than our wants. Would you, O oh God, pour forth blessings beyond what we even know to ask? Hearing our pleas in the spirit of Nehemiah, Guide us in the way you would have us to go, that we may know the joy of our salvation. And now as your children, we lift our voices as one and say in prayer the words you taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One of the great privileges and honors of my pastoral office is to extend to you this invitation. This invitation to share in the Lord's table. You may feel today you are not worthy of this meal or don't deserve it. Then you, dear child of God, need this meal most of all. We don't come to table with our Lord because of our worthiness, but because Jesus Christ, as we heard play today, paid it all. So come. And receive nourishment and grace from our God even beyond what words can say and express as we share in this holy feast. Pray with me. Oh God, we give you thanks for this meal. Will you help us to remember your sacrifice for our benefit? And for God's glory, beyond what we even know to ask and can understand, will you speak to us the words of life as we receive this holy meal for which now we give thanks. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen back there in the back. Our Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed and deserted, so lonely in his humanity and afraid, shared in meal with his friends and he took bread and broke it, <coughs> gave it to his disciples and said, take me, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Friends, this is the body
explain that this is the cup of the new covenant. It is sealed in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, all of you, and do this in the name of the Lord. And even today, as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord, which you pray with me. Oh God, we give you thanks for the holiness of this feast that pours life and nourishment into us, these symbolisms and sacraments of our faith that remind us that your body was broken that we may be restored, that your blood was shed, that we may be filled with grace forevermore. Simply by trusting in you, we have life and life more abundantly through your life given for us all. Thanks be to God and your gracious love, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's share now in our hymn of response, number 420. Would you stand with me? Friends, as we prepare to go forth as the light and love of Christ, go together with God's blessing for us as his children. 
Will you receive it with me? May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his gaze upon you, and give you peace now and forever. Bless y'all. Have a good week, everybody.